Welcome to the Soft Rebellion Podcast, a homecoming to the creative power of your female body. Our world uproots us from the gifts of the feminine, the intuitive, the instinctual, the cyclical, the soft. What's the result? Patriarchal cultures of perfectionism, shame and disconnect that leave us constantly running, never arriving. Imagine a world of women softly rebelling, claiming our cyclicity, our weirdness and our rest as we courageously cultivate a deep and delicious relationship to our female bodies. My name is Florina, I'm an osteopath, dancer, writer and coach. I've been on my own journey sparked by an eating disorder to come home to the wild, poetic anatomy of my female body and awaken my creative power. And I invite you to join me and my guests, trailblazing teachers, healers and creatives, as we each reclaim our own soft rebellion. Welcome back on the podcast, everyone. Do you sometimes or often find yourself wondering how to tap into your own magic and how to bring it into physical creation? And do you ask yourself how the heck to tackle all the fears and self-doubts trying to throw you off along the way? I know all these questions so well and I feel so grateful to have had the opportunity to let the one and only Lisa Lister share her wisdom about it with us today. In this conversation you will learn that in order to do more you have to be more of who you are. All magic starts with your body. To source from yourself is an expression of pure self-love, which is nothing else than a deep and delicious relationship to your own body. Today's guest, Lisa Lister, spent a hot minute developing exactly that, coming home into her body, sensing and feeling through all its tastes, colors and rhythms, of the experiences and events life offered her. And the result, well, start reading her book. This woman is pure awesomeness indeed. The Cooler magazine crowned Lisa the defender of female awesomeness. Lisa is a best-selling author, visionary artist and woman's wellness practitioner. She offers support, space, remembrance, spiritual guidance, astrological insight, cyclic Cyclic, cyclic maps and counsel to women who are exploring, navigating and wanting to heal their relationship with their body, power, sex, creativity, pleasure and passion. I so enjoyed this conversation and you can't imagine how oh, re-inspired and encouraging in my body I felt after, after chatting to Lisa for this hour and yeah, I just want to say enjoy, enjoy, enjoy. And I'm so, so happy that you are here with both of us today. Lots of love. Welcome, Lisa Lister on the podcast. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited but also just really grateful and it feels I saw this morning it feels indulgent to spend this time with you talking about your creation of self sorcery and talking about she which in your words is the creative and primordial I love that one <laughs> power mm -hmm. source residing in all of us and this is what this podcast and also my work is about and your work. I'm so grateful for all the footsteps um, of your work. And it's bloody Thank fantastic. You. And I know that my listener will think <laughs> probably pretty similar about that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Mm. Received, received, <laughs> received, and thank you. We're just like we're literally all mirrors for each other's creativity, yes. right? So that's yes. all that this is, and so this yes. is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. So thank you. And this is why it's so important that we all follow our magic, right? Because we are meant to spark 
in each other. That's exactly the firework which is meant to happen. <laughs> exactly, that is it. Mm-hmm. And that's that's all I ever hope for. Mm-hmm. When I create anything, mm-hmm. whether it's oracle cards or books, mm-hmm. it's that it just inspires, it just inspires mm-hmm. others to do the same. Talking about oracle cards, you know, the other beautiful oh, thing, yeah. to just as a little intro, I feel in these last couple of days, Lisa, I feel especially... I want to say engaged with self sourcer oracle cards, or I feel they have been working through me in a way they never did. I literally pulled this card 10 Ooh. times in a row, 10 days in a row. <laughs> would you believe? Well, and I wouldn't, except I would, because I created exactly. them, right? and I know that they do and this. That's like other yeah. oracle cards. Other oracle cards are brilliant and gorgeous, yet there's mm-hmm. just something about these that means you can't, override them do you know what I mean no. like, there's, like you want you just want to there's a lot of times I want to go not today not today pop it back in yes. shuffle again yes. and now out she pops again I'm like really are we doing this and it's almost as if she's talking through us like yes. she's like no we have to pay attention and something like lean back for instance you just mm-hmm. call lean back it's it's a it's a hard one for us as women specifically to mm-hmm. lean back to be like oh, we have to take a step back. We have to allow our nervous system to mm-hmm. step back into its ancestral place and, and really restore. Mm-hmm. And that's so tricky because the world, the society that we live in doesn't want that for us. So that's why that's always the one that wants to go straight back in. And then it's like, yes. no, nah, 10 times, 10 times. Ah, oh, you already <laughs> opened to wonderful, important. I, I need to let go of my script. You already opened to yeah, wonderful, that, that important out. windows. Oh. One, one, you said, Lisa, we can't overwrite. We can't right. overwrite she. I'd like to hear more about that. And the other, this challenge to rest, because I know this mm. voice and you know this <laughs> voice. And this is a collective yeah. voice. We all know this voice. Right. Yes. But it's so okay, important. so the override part. Yes. Yeah, where should we start? The override part. So let's start there. I'd say that we will try because it's our nature. We are mm. we live in this society that does want us to ultimately um do, 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 keep going, keep going, be very linear. And we're not that. We're not that. We're cyclical beings. We're we're beings that need to like, yes, do and rest in order to do more be more of who we are there has Mm. to be these rest periods there has to be this nourishing these Mm. nourishment periods there has to be this restorative periods of time which which are not built into Mm. our societal model right so she will and, and anybody that's called to she to the feminine frequency to and again, this isn't a um, a label. It, for me, it's what I call divine. It's mm-hmm. it's it's for me. It's bringing back the the mama, mm-hmm. the mama energy that like beautiful um, ma frequency mm-hmm. that's been lost in so much of the kind of religious text. And it's for us to remember, like, wait, there is this beautiful, nurturing, yummy, mm-hmm. um, deliciousness available. Yes um and actually and she's fierce too like she's super fierce don't get me wrong and that's and that's sometimes when that override period like when you're trying to override things when we're just trying to keep going keep doing keep showing up she'll be like "Mm -hmm. I will take you out I will take you out Mm -hmm. at the knees because you need to slow down she will kick our asses Mm. and it's not always comfortable because it's not meant to be and because for so many of us we get really good we get really good at doing. We mm-hmm. get really good at following the societal model, right? And so, therefore, she has to kick our ass. So, therefore, it has to be quite, sometimes, feel very yes. uncomfortable in our body in order for that to land. And then when it does, ultimately, she'll be there. Like, she won't always stroke your hair. She won't always be, like, singing you a lullaby. But she'll be there to remind mm. you, like, okay, this is what yes. we're doing now what we're doing now if you let her if you listen and she's heard most I think through our wombs through our hearts through our bellies you know and and it's just that's how we can uh, how I connect with her is through is through my body and she'll tell me if something's off I can smell it I can taste it I can sense it but that's Mm. taken a hot minute that's taken a hot minute but the rest the rest of it that you said you know it's like 
it's not easy. Mm-hmm. It's not easy in a society that does not want you to rest because if you rest, you're not depleted. If you rest, you're not burned out. If you rest, mm-hmm. you know and can hear what your body yes. needs. And so you give it to your body. You satiate mm-hmm. yourself. You, you fill up. And a woman that's filled up, and I speak about women specifically, I know, but like if for any human, like that if when mm-hmm. you're full up, it's a lot harder to kind of keep you on their track, to keep you compliant. It's a lot harder for you to do as you're told because you're like, wait, my body's telling me not mm-hmm. to do that. I'm not gonna do that. And it's much easier for yes. you as a as a human to make decisions, to to taste your agency and power. But it's much harder for society to kind of control us. And so they like us depleted. They like us worn out. They like us like worn down so that we'll do as we're told. So it's quite a defiant act to, 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 to rest. Definitely. Yes. But it's so, ah, you know, it sings to my heart. And at the same time, it burns to my heart when you say we need to be more of who we are in order to do more because... You know, I so agree and I've studied the body. I'm a dancer and osteopath and anatomist. I know it all. And oh, that's, it's that shearing force between, yes, really dropping back to these bloody, literally bloody instincts. And uh-huh. still that, I call it the, <laughs> the hangover of our yeah. patriarchal society. I can sure. feel that hangover. Um, but it's wonderful to hear you talk about about mama energy and just Mm -hmm. because you define self-love as and many people say oh now she's also talking about self-love but it's so raw right self-love is the deep delicious relationship to your body yeah i yes yeah i just sign your description (laughs) this definition so much and maybe tell us a little bit more you said you work with your body so so how might that look like lisa if you feel I'm well, about to burn out. I mean, out. a trillion ways Maybe you don't in terms <laughs> of my personal self, like it's been through my menstrual cycle, um, through, but I'd say through our cyclical mm-hmm. nature. Like, so whether that's, whether that's through a mm-hmm. sleep cycle, whether that's through a, a, a seasonal cycle, whether that's with the moon, like, our, you know, and, mm-hmm. and it's, that's been my adventure, my mm-hmm. discovery process mm-hmm. of, of um, working with my body because I was mm-hmm. very disconnected. I I was very much from the neck up. It was all like head, 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 head. And, and this body wasn't, you know, I wasn't really attached to it. I was disconnected from it. Right. Mm. And so for me, it's been coming in. And so in self sorcery, I talk about this, this, this call to come in and come down because so much of us is like to come up, Mm. come out. Like it's to be outward seen. Mm. and, And actually when we come in, and when we come down, down, down into our bellies, into our hips, mm. into our, what I call like our cauldron of creativity, this mm. beautiful pelvic bowl, energetically and spiritually, right? Like, so it's, it's, it's physically coming in through the breath, like into my body so that mm-hmm. I can learn to trust that space because I didn't trust it. I haven't been taught to trust it. So many of us haven't been taught mm. to trust our bodies. Yeah, actually, if we come in through the breath, come down into that space. If we can reconnect with it, like I was talking to her, you know, like in Love Your Lady Landscape, I talk about uh, this conversation that that had to start, be- I had to begin to have with my womb space mm. because I was like, they, the, the doctors were like going to whip it out. That's That was their words. We're going to whip that out. You don't need it. Mm-hmm. You can't have children. You can't do this. You can't do that. Take it out. You don't need it. I was like, there's something mm. going on here. And so I came in and came down and I and and I started having a conversation with her and, and like she had a lot to say. And actually learning to trust that voice over this voice. And of course, there's space for this yes. one. Our mind is so clever. It's good at the editing, it's good at details, right? But the feeling, the the sensorial nature of life has to be felt from in inwards out right like we can't Mm -hmm. there's not any more things to get or attract like that becoming more of who we are Mm -hmm. has happened for me by being in my body if I can be in my body I can come down Mm -hmm. if I can ask my tummy my belly my cauldron like what are we doing what's this about Mm -hmm. there's a decision to be made if there's a 
if there's a place or space that is looking to be investigated in, in my life, mm-hmm. it's like, what's this about? And trust that versus this one that said, oh, well, that would be, that's mm-hmm. a bad idea. This one wants to keep you safe, right? This one wants to like, wants you to do, like keep you so that, you know, we survive. But down here, yes. like, she's so wise. It's our wisdom. It's the, it, and it's mm-hmm. this part of us that knows. It knows stuff and it's ancestral. It's like, and like you say, it's in our blood, literally, right? So it's got, it carries the wisdom of yes. all the women that have gone before us, whether that's our familial line, whether that's ancestral, whether mm-hmm. that's um, yeah, and spiritual, I feel, whether that's like I feel that's lineage, maybe what, what you mean with primordial. So actually we can reconnect with yeah. that in, in mm. through that knowing that comes from there. And then we become. Because what happens is we reveal more of who we are versus thinking, oh, I have to do this. I have to do that. I have to become, you know, it's, it's like you're not becoming anything. You, oh, That's not the word. But, you you know, in terms of you're not trying to add things to yourself. You're revealing more of who you actually are, like your truest nature. And that's not always comfortable because that doesn't fit necessarily with the societal stories of what you should be doing as a woman, but yes. as a person and all of those things, right? So we're, we're in this, you want to feel more of who you are, but then it becomes, well, I don't think it does become riskier, but it's just mm-hmm. from, it can feel risky in the world that we live in to become more of who we are. But then what I've found is the more mm. I trust that voice, the more I'm able to come to my own senses, trust my instinct, instinctual nature, the easier life has become for me because there's no masks. Like I'm not putting mm. anything on anymore. Like I don't feel like I have to perform. It's just like, if that feels good, yes. I'll do it. If that makes me, and, and that potentially may seem very selfish to put ourselves first, to kind of choose mm. that. But if I do that, then I am of way more service, way more service to the world if I'm full and satiated and trusting the decisions I'm making, whether that's in in concordance with everybody else's versions of what they want for me, is not my concern. Yes. Wow, it's, ah, again, you open so many wonderful windows. Lisa, (laughs) one thing which I really thought about um it made me think about primordial and right i was thinking giving that a voice which had a voice before we actually had the spoken word right when we were oh, growing yeah. primordial my life is all about the embryo when i was growing in utero mm. that body had a voice she had such a voice <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Oh, I young. call that the ocean of beingness. And exactly, can we can we indulge that? And that's about mothering, right? That's about. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it all is, isn't mm-hmm. it? And water feels like such a nurturing, nourishing. Um, you know, it, it and it, like you say, we come from it. Yes. It's, it makes so much sense. It holds so many, much of our memory as well. So yes. Mm. It, oh, and the other thing up. which I yeah, would yeah. love to now um, to dive into because you know, yeah, you have been dealing. You have really worked your way through it, and you got over that scariness. And I know, I know that place of it being really scary when we start to drop in and we really notice that we notice kind of the voice of our unique magic, which wants to come to the world. Mm. But I would love you. Can you share with us on one level? How can we deal? How can we deal with that fear and scariness? And also the second question I really have is how can we, because sometimes we hear that inner voice, I meant to do this or that, but it, we yeah. can't quite hear the voice of how to voice that then physically into the world. Yeah. And ha- yeah, how? Whew. Give us your wisdom, <laughs> Lisa. Honestly, <laughs> I love you. And honestly, I haven't got all the answers. And I think that's the joy mm. as well of this work, specifically of the work that we're all doing right now. Anyone that's awake to this, to this, sensation or sensorial mm-hmm. kind of work that we're doing is that there aren't 
like hard and fast answers because that again is what we've been told that is part of the patriarchal hangover that there's like there's a there's a question and then there's an answer there's a way and actually it'll be different for everyone it'll be different for each of us but what i'd say around the fear is like don't ignore it Mm. like so a lot of people are like oh yeah face the fear do it anyway and i agree to a certain extent right but what i what i think first is that we witness the fear that we're able to because fear often like lives in a darker place right it lives in a place where where like light is not shone on it because it's been because so much of women's power specifically I would say has been put in the dark and then we've been taught to be afraid of the dark that's like that's part of that patriarchal kind of um over like mm-hmm. kind of um story right and so when you recognize that okay so anything that we feel fearful of is has often been put in the dark and will often hold power because fear is where your power is so what you're fearful of is where you're most mm. powerful and so it's on, on, on well, for me, it's what I've found anyway. And so if we recognize, <coughs> right, okay, I see you. And then we shine a light on that fear. Like we literally take our torches and we go, and like we go on a mission to go and go, who are you? What are you? What, what, what are we doing here? And, and, and recognize it then it becomes less scary, mm-hmm. right? It's the shadows and the and the stories, because you've got to remember, our imaginations are so incredible. We are so capable of making up incredible stories. Yes. And you've got to remember, those seeds have been planted in us by, by what, you know, by the kind of the, the systems and structures. And so actually now we're kind of having to unpick those stories. Mm. And so facing fear and when I say face it like I say we're not kind of like we're not confronting it we're not coming up against it and going screw you Mm -hmm. it's it's more like let's let's just like take that torch let's shine a light on it and go oh I see you I see what you are like you're telling me like so for example if it's like I'm scared of speaking out loud if I'm scared of speaking my voice telling my truth right and that will be because throughout throughout millennia the women that have gone before us have had them have been silenced their voices have Mm. been have been you know stolen from they've been censored they've been all of the ways right so we've been told not so it makes total sense that we have and we have a a remembrance of fear regarding sharing our voice right whether that's whether that's from the stories we've been told in order to remain fearful, like, oh, if you speak out, this will happen. If you speak out, Mm -hmm. this will happen. This will happen. Um, You'll be misunderstood. You'll be maligned. You'll be this. You'll be that. So, of course, like, your whole system is going to go, be safe, be safe, be safe. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that. But shine a light on that. See it. See it. Go, right, okay. I see that Mary Magdalene had a voice Mm -hmm. and they told a different story about her. I see that they've told us a completely different, yet still she showed up in the way she showed up, right? And I think that's where we have to then start to trust ourselves and be like, right, okay. My 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 story, my voice, my truth is more important than what others perceive me to yes. be. Because usually the fear is about how you are perceived, whether you will be misunderstood. Because for so long we've been told we must be liked, we must be lovable, we must be nice, we must be good. And like the good part is the bit that really and and goodness is is what we intrinsically are, right? Yes. We are goodness, but good. Being good is what we're told to be. And that is what will keep a lot of us in fear. And so I say we shine a light on that. And we also just start to recognize what that looks like for us. And like, that's what I mean is like, I think the theme will be the same for a lot of us. Like we've been told to be good. We've been told to be quiet or speak when you're spoken to or, or like be kind, be nice, be likable, which are all, you know, lovely and if that's not in concurrence, if that's not in concordance, sorry, with what mm-hmm. your heart and truth is right now, if you're angry, if you want to express yourself, if if you want to, you know, if you, however you want to be seen, it's like, and so you just tentatively, and for me, it's always been a, like a toe dip, mm-hmm. right? Like we just have a little toe dip in and see. And yes, that might be uncomfortable. 
and like I say at the beginning, like sometimes it's, it's the uncomfiness that will create the pearl, right? It's the rub. It's the coming up against your edges. Yes. It's coming up against places and spaces where like, oh, this is really uncomfortable. Oh, what if, what if, what if? That's how we see fear. That's when we see it and we go, oh, okay. And I'm still going to do this. It's not like face the fear and do it anyway. It's more like, okay, I see you. I know mm-hmm. what you are, but I also know who I am. Yes. And like you say, when you hear that voice of the ma- of your magic, it's like, it might it'd be really quiet whisper to start mm-hmm. with because she hasn't had the opportunity to speak. She mm-hmm. hasn't had the opportunity to express herself. And that's cool. That's cool. Like we just, we allow some space for mm-hmm. that to be. And we allow her to, to just play a little mm-hmm. bit and, and to speak us and we make space whether that's you know I, I don't meditate per se mm-hmm. right my, my 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 experience is that I sit and I talk with the voice that's deeper mm-hmm. in me and, so, and that for me is my magic voice when I hear the head voice and you do start to recognize the difference I promise like it's definitely a breathing in it's mm-hmm. coming down and it's the voice that's in our belly but which is a replica which is a replication, is a mirror of that primordial voice that's underground. Like I said, like mama has been pushed underground, but she's there. She is the earth. So actually, if we can hear that in our pelvic bowls, in mm. our underworld, right? we can hear her through there, that becomes our truth voice. We're like, ah, oh, there she is. There she is. And we might just catch inklings of her, but if we spend mm. time with her, if we start to really love on her, we can journal with her, and she becomes louder than the head voice. Yes. But I'm not, I'm not saying it's easy, is all I'm saying. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I don't want people to be like, oh, it's just a... Da, da, da. No, like, it's, it's not work. easy. It's a real, I would say, I'm a couple of years behind you. No, that, there is no higher, no yeah. no things like that. But, exactly. none. Yeah, <laughs> um, cool. but no, it's a very deep dive, right? And it's, I would yeah. say, it's, I mean, that's that's the journey of our whole life. And we will still be shaping that or that this voice will still reveal new and different faces and colors and textures hopefully when i'm 80 and 90 um but as i hear you talk lisa oh it's so wonderful on one level i feel myself right now at this moment so much pressure dropping away when you say just give her space and play to also her to find her own voice and trust that she will reveal to you when she is when she is ready and it's okay <laughs> right and is if we again like we've been told mm-hmm. that there's always an outcome and and it could be that we sit with her and nothing comes and you think oh well that's it she she's not talking mm-hmm. through me and you're like oh but she is because the silence is what you need right now mm-hmm. right and it's just recognizing that all of these th- i mean i get frustrated Mm -hmm. I get mad frustrated when I've got a question and I come in and I come down and I'm like right okay right what's Mm -hmm. this how we how are we gonna negotiate this and there's nothing (laughs) there's absolutely nothing what do you do then Lisa how do you deal with that frustration I get cross because I'm human right and I Uh think we have to remember Mm -hmm. that we are still here having this human experience and Mm -hmm. so the very human part of us is going to feel frustration mm-hmm. but it's more but that's the point is that we feel the 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 sensations and for me there's frustration and and so that means that I'm holding on to something that I want there to be an outcome mm-hmm. right so if, if I can then mm-hmm. loosen that that need for an outcome for a result if I can then loosen that need to have an answer and to let what wants to be revealed be revealed in its own time. Now, you've got to remember, I'm a very impatient human too. Like, I get it. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> the human versions of us are impatient. And so that's the lesson in and of itself, mm-hmm. right? That's the lesson. It's like, yep, you are impatient and, and you also have the answer, which is so frustrating. Mm-hmm. No one wants to hear that you already have the answers within. Like, it's the biggest piece of, <laughs> you know, that's the biggest medicine I've received mm-hmm. that I still can't take. Like, you know, I know it, I know it intellectually and I've also felt it, but do I remember it on the daily? No. Yes. And that's why this work is like you say, is so important that mm-hmm. it's a life when you recognize it's a lifelong project, that there's going to be new revealments, new understandings of ourselves. 
I'm just taking a little pause from my conversation with Lisa to invite you onto my new free mini course. There is so much softer rebellious energy in Lisa's journey and I felt inspired and reignited talking to her to keep reclaiming my own body to live the soft rebellion through her. For me, this has been a journey from body shame and disconnect to joy and into the fullness of my creative power. And over the summer break, I have created a free mini course for you, in which I share with you how the gold nuggets, or I share with you the gold nuggets of inspiration, tools and practices I have harvested in this process and how you can use those too to meet your very own version of your soft rebellion. Yes, if you would like to be guided onto a journey to move from body shame and disconnect to joy and into the fullness of your creative power, and if you would like to taste the wild and poetic nature of the soft rebellion and align with its movement and momentum, then this free mini course is for you. You can find all the links in the show notes. And I'm very much looking forward having you on board. Let us journey together. I'm excited to hear what you take from my offering, what it does with you and how it changes the experience of your life. Do email me at softrebellion at florinatali.com or you can always tag me on Instagram at florina.tali. Little technical magical issue but <laughs> we will find the thread again because she is guiding us right that's exactly the point um yeah we were just saying you were just saying lisa that that wonderful process you talked us through that yes hopefully or you reconfirmed me yes that hope that is a lifelong process yes yeah it is a lifelong process so we have to let go we have to and I mean, again, hilarious to tell women to just let go, receive, slow mm -hmm. down. All of these things can feel so foreign to our bodies to to do because we're we're so protective. Like we we need we've been taught to like be to survive, to do, to show up, to, and that creates like a almost an armor of protection around us. And so in order to really allow this kind of feminine frequency to move through us. And like I said, I feel like, you know, when I'm not saying we don't need systems and structures, right? Mm -hmm. We do, but there's a more kind of feminine way in which we can do that. Yes. There's a much more cyclical nature of, of creating within the, the, the doing, yes. like knowing that there's this kind of yang energy that rises up in us that can do and 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 then there's also a season to rest so that we can we can nourish ourselves with what it is we've learned we can let it we can let it percolate we can let it alchemize and then we can also use like all of what we've we we discover about ourselves what we reveal what what wants to also be received and then um, like i say more importantly what wants to be received like we have to start practicing and it is a practice i'm not saying it's easy i'm absolutely not this uh, uh, this ability to receive which and because we can only follow our hearts we can only trust our bodies mm. if we are able to soften if we're able to allow ourselves to receive nourishment to yes. receive satiation to receive the things we love desire that bring us joy and pleasure but and and so that we can fill up so that we can source ourselves versus being told what you need in order to source Absolutely. yourself um and then you become source right because we're connected to her because if we are satiated and full we are so much it's so much easier to connect to she to connect to that primordial energy creative force that we all ultimately are it's much easier to do that if we are not holding on so tightly, if the grip isn't so strong. But I understand why the grip is there. And I think that's the bit we have to give, all give ourselves a lot of um, kind of slack, like cut ourselves some slack around 
around the things that we do in order to survive right like so yes we hold on tightly yes yes we've created armor to protect ourselves of course we have right of course we have it makes total sense and no one's saying drop it forever like we were saying earlier it's like just creating some space just slowing down just making some time each day just to soften whether that is to literally feel our bodies soften like where's tight and just don't even like go like do a little body scan like oh what's that ouchy there yes. why is that so tight what's hold like what am I holding on to there and just to explore our bodies and ourselves so that that softness can be present mm. um and it's not like I say it doesn't have to be all the time yes you know you you know you Mm -hmm. but it's also recognizing that it is Mm -hmm. possible for our body and that it is possible for us to receive absolutely and also i feel the urge to read or to kind of say here you mentioned that several times too that's woman that you that she that you are not alone in doing that you do that for yourself and you do that for the collective womanhood right and that because that that knowing that very often carries me through bumpy rocks when I know, yes, I might right now see all these fears to go back to the fears and I shine light on them for myself, but for all women behind and in front of me. Yes. And oh my that goodness, just, so oh, yes. right, we can feel it through the screen without camera. Yeah. <laughs> that's so but that's, that's why we do this that's why that's this is why happening. we do and this podcast like, absolutely yes. yeah yeah absolutely it's beautiful Thank i you. think that is really important and it's wonderful you know i started asking you i had these two questions one about so lisa tell us how to deal with fears and the second one so tell us how to voice whatever magic we we feel bubbling up in us to bring that into the world and as i hear you speak now i'm thinking probably the answer to the second question or part of it isn't it's within all you just said because it just does and I'd love to hear from your experience you know I see your books your cards your work and it's Mm. you are so physically bringing your matching into the world but that hasn't happened from one day of the other right that exactly was born out of what we just talked absolutely and and it's why I create, right? So I, I haven't made children this lifetime, mm-hmm. right? So if you're a mama, and that's why we can't compare ourselves. We mm-hmm. are all creatrixes, but we can't compare ourselves to each other because we're all creating at different speeds in different ways. And for me, to I am I know, and this and, and this is a knowing mm-hmm. now, but I didn't know this, right? But it is a knowing now because of the work I've been doing. And this is like a 20 year process, right? Like of of unlocking my body wisdom, of knowing myself, of getting to know myself through my body, that I am here to simply experience what it is to be in this body, what it is to be a creatrix, what it is to understand the cyclical nature Mm -hmm. of all things. Mm And then to create art based on that, like to create art that supports other women to remember, mm. that helps other women to reconnect with that, mm. to help, that helps women to reclaim that and for us to revere it. And that's literally the only remit I have now. Mm. It, did, it wasn't like that. Like in my 20s, it was like, you must do this. There's like goals. There's this, there's, there's this, the, you know, you have to hit this. You have to make this much money. You have to do that. But as I've softened, I've realized it's not it's not about that at all for me Mm. and yes it can look like I'm very productive in inverted commas Mm -hmm. right like it can look like like I know I'm just um you know I've just um pre-launched the Venus Mm -hmm. book now it looks like to a lot of people wow like she's just uh, and a lot of people like wow another book and I'm like but what else am I here to do Mm -hmm. like I'm here to create like that's my Mm -hmm. that's my magic and that's my medicine Mm -hmm. and and I and so I you know I simply follow my heart Mm -hmm. and that's taken a hot minute (laughs) by the way that's not been that's not always been the case but but like my body of work is my body obviously Mm -hmm. is felt through my body and then I share and I create and if that didn't feel good I wouldn't do it right Mm -hmm. like I'd do something else and so I feel like that's true for all of us is like we've we've told we have to have a purpose 
But what if it's simply the lived experience shared? Oh, I love like, what that. Is mm-hmm. that. What if it's just that? Mm-hmm. And for me, it took all of the pressure off. And it took all of the, the need to be like, oh, okay, so my pur- what's my purpose in life? What? Mm-hmm. Because we're taught, and that's what self-development, that's what self-help, in inverted mm-hmm. commas again, you know, tries to teach us is that we have to become a thing where there's another thing you have to do to be better, to be faster, to be stronger. Mm-hmm. But what if we're simply slowing all the way down? What if we're, we're, we're feeling our way through and we're experiencing on a sensorial kind of nature what it is to be a woman what it is to be a human what it is to be in a body and then to share the lived experience and for that lived experience to be as joyful and pleasurable and as nourishing and satiating as possible which is what the Venus book is is a kind of follow on from self sorcery. If self sorcery is the way, which is what I think it is, it's the way in which we can do that. Mm. Venus, the book Venus, the the work, the body of work of Venus that I'm creating is to support us to live the experience, mm. to not feel like we have to keep doing and doing and doing, but to actually like, oh, what would it feel like to let joy be present here for longer, yes. for pleasure to be longer, be, be, be available to me for longer. Mm. I hear two so important things, Lisa. One, again, that process of um, of journaling. I mean, my, my journaling every morning starts with the question, dear body, what do you want me to know today? And I feel, oh, I yeah, and, you know, you self-sorcery, I, I think body sorcery. <laughs> But anyway, yes. so I, I hear two things on one level. Can we, that daily, that daily conversation, that dialogue, yes. can we allow then to just crystallize more and more what is really the golden thread of your creatrix and of mine? Because then we can just fully yeah, put our power into that. It was so powerful to hear say, you, you know, that's what I'm going to do. And that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. And it's just that, and and that decision literally has has like opened my heart wide open. Uh, it means that I can be soft. It means that I can be softer because I'm not trying to meet other people's expectations mm-hmm. all the time or, or do what people think one need of me. It's mm-hmm. like, oh no, I'm I'm here to live mm-hmm. and to really live the full experience. And that's not just to say, oh it's going to be joyful all the time. Of course not. The mm-hmm. fully lived experience is to know that dark place. Yes. Is to know it mm-hmm. so well and to witness what's available to us there. And then also to know that joy and pleasure are available at the same time mm-hmm. in our body. So there can be a horror show going on in the world, which for some mm-hmm. people there is right mm-hmm. now. And to witness that, Oh, joy and pleasure can also be present in this body. Yes. It's not one or the other. It's not or or either. It's this and that because the fully lived experience is one that's fully felt. And so we have to be able to feel that, like we were saying, the fear, to witness it, mm-hmm. like feel it, witness it. No one's saying ignore it or push it aside. Mm-hmm. That's not going to serve us because that'll only come and bite us on the ass in some other way, generally through our health, right? Yes. So if, if we are able to... Um, witness that and then look at okay well I see that and oh what my body is also capable of eating this really juicy freaking peach Mm -hmm. and really loving it Mm -hmm. oh and it's really I can laugh and I can I can be in conversation with a girlfriend I can have a conversation on a podcast with Mm -hmm. a woman I love Mm -hmm. and admire and I trust you know like you it's like so beautiful Mm -hmm. to be able to to Mm -hmm. witness all of this at the same time because I'm enjoying the lived experience of being mm-hmm. human right now versus trying to be a version of something mm-hmm. that someone told me I should be or must be in order to be liked. Mm. Oh, I'm, oh, we are crystallizing so important messages. You know, now you, you shared how the fear is where the power is. And the more I see now we shed light onto that fear, I think that brings us exactly, I feel that brings me to the power (laughs) of making that a bit blunt, raw, rough decision of just saying with zero questions, with zero doubt, 
I do what sings to my heart. I'm very much in that process in the moment of, you know, letting go of the things which don't anymore. And, but yeah. it's so good to hear that from you because it needs that at one point just decision. Yeah. And this is the thing, right? Like, so we always, and this isn't comfortable even, I know I've said a few things about this throughout mm -hmm. our discussion today, but it's not always comfy to say this, but it's mad responsibility. It's like self-responsibility and you do get to choose. Like people are like, oh, I haven't, I, I've got no choice. I'm like, but you do. We always have choice. It's just not always that comfortable to admit that mm. because it's much easier sometimes to do as we're told, right? It's much easier to tow a line, to not rock a boat, to, to stay safe. And I get all the reasons and the whys as to, you know, why we do mm -hmm. that. And there's just something about making a choice, you making the decision and not having that decision or choice made mm -hmm. for you that gives you a lot of power mm -hmm. back it gives you agency mm -hmm. it gives you it gives you um reverence and it shows do you know what it does is it shows you and your body trust you're like oh shit we're in this together i'm not gonna leave yes. you now i'm not letting you know because so many times we abandon our body's wisdom and knowledge in order to be seen as doing the right thing as in, in order to 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 be seen as the good girl to be seen as oh okay that person's not going to like me if I choose this yes. right so it's easier to say yes to that in order to stay liked but then resentment kicks in and also we're just abandoning what our heart and our body knows to be true which is this is not okay this is not the right situation this is not where I need to be and so and like I say our body does feel it and and we do then start to store up that knowledge and so when someone talks about self-trust it becomes just an idea a concept because we've abandoned mm. ourselves so much that we're not able to we're not able to know what that even feels like anymore whereas if we make a choice if we take fierce responsibility self-responsibility for a choice and a decision mm. then our body goes wait up she's trust us she's trusted mm. us we trust her she trusts us we've made that decision and we stand with it. And then our roots get stronger because we can stand in our power yes. because we know ourselves better. Our body goes, ah, she trusts us. There, come, there becomes this kind of really beautiful relay between our body and our head. And, and then we come into a much more of an alignment. And then that alignment becomes our truth. And then that truth becomes, like we just said, the lived experience. Mm. And that is all we are, or and that can be, heaven is all we are meant to share, or that can be, that is the most potent starting point to share your, my, her, to share our work. Because I, I hear yeah. these questions so often, what, where to start? How can I just start yeah. with sharing your lift experience? Yes. Yeah. And I think that more importantly than yes. Ender, because who needs any more information? No one needs more information. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much. That's what that's what the internet's for. That's mm -hmm. why you know there's so much information out there. What we need is wisdom. What we need is felt experience. Like I trust mm -hmm. someone that is telling me their felt experience. I don't want you to like be able to list a, a load of facts about mm -hmm. like X Y Z. Not interested. I can read a book for that. Yes. I want your story. I want your what's in your belly. I want to know mm -hmm. what lights you up. I want to know what makes your heart sing. Mm -hmm. I want to know what what's like caused you the biggest heartfelt grief you've ever felt. I want all of that personally. Yes. <laughs> and I feel like as as most women uh, um, who are awakening to this, what you said at the very beginning about how we you know, how, how, well, I think we both said, it's this reflection, yes. right? And it, so we witness, we then witness the reflection in another. Mm -hmm. So it's not like, oh, my story's the same, but what you can feel, feels like you feel that there's a truth. So you're like, oh, so we might not have the same experience, but there will be a similar theme, yes. which will ultimately be trust or, or whether there will be a thread that, that makes you go, oh, she knows. Oh, she knows. Versus, oh, she's telling me a thing and, oh, I need to do X, Y, and Z. Like, no one's interested. Well, I'm not yeah, anyway. <laughs> I think that is, I'm not interested. that is so, so, it's so, so important, both of what you said. Yeah, 
we got to a point we don't need more information. I mean, we all see it doesn't really bring us further, but we need more exactly right. wisdom and experience. And, the, and that brings us the circle back. Exactly. That's the beauty is that's just that's there available. And that's your big thing. It's not about learning something new or doing something. It's about remembering and undoing. Yes. And yes. with, yeah, with fierceness also, I want to say, come on, come on, sisters. <laughs> Let's just now all trust that it's true. Let's just all know that it's true. We need more wisdom and experience and not more information. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And our agreed, bodies are... Agreed, oh, agreed. You know, we are story creatures, right? The feminine is poetic, right. is metaphorical, is... Oh. Uh, yeah. If we let it, and we have to let it, we have to let it. Mm. We're not information carriers. We are wisdom mm. weavers, mm -hmm. right? Like, we're not... We're, we're here to remember. Mm -hmm. And, and like, through our body, that's such an easier mm -hmm. task, mm -hmm. right? It's not like... If we just keep collating other people's information but collating stories yes. that's how wisdom is weaved yeah you know that's how we are able to weave the most beautiful new possibilities mm -hmm. which is necessary in order for this world mm -hmm. um to to really grow i yeah. think like i've got a lot of hope i've got a lot of hope and and i think we need to have a lot of hope in, in a world that feels like it's burning yes. that's you know it's why i've written self sorcery it's why i've created venus mm -hmm. it's because these things are uh, like because there's hope in me mm -hmm. and I want there to be hope in all of us we're told not to like how awful things are but we're not told how great the possibility can be mm -hmm. that and that possibility can be created by us through yeah. us and especially on that breath you are holding for all of us such a such a precious and inspiring mirror right and I share that also now for any listener yeah. who thinks oh they're talking a bit fairy talent magic no we are not talking mm. fairy talent magic this is real and just trust yes. i really said yeah can we trust that process and i do want to say do say, do look at lisa you yeah you have written and journaled with that voice for years and years yes. and you fully dropped into yourself and you probably lost yourself at times and, and got confused Absolutely. and oh my gosh the whole the whole spectrum of it and but out of it came so precious work for the world so trust this process oh, oh well thank you and yes mm. i think you you just said something so beautiful and it's and it's this full spectrum of being here mm. now it's like the full spectrum of of feelings and experiences it's not like you're not you don't have to be one thing or another you don't have to accept a label that someone gives you you simply get to explore and experience and that's how I've revealed more of myself and like you say mm -hmm. the journey will be uh, you know and you will have to, the journey will be interesting mm -hmm. in inverted yes. commas it will be interesting <laughs> you will sometimes have to create a path where there isn't one mm -hmm. but you can also then lean in that's why i'm i'm so interested in the cyclical work yeah. of like and and the venus cycle specifically for women mm -hmm. is is beautiful because we are then able to see this beautiful 19 month yeah. cycle that mm -hmm. is available to us that takes us on a very feminine energy like it's the solar feminine mm -hmm. so there's fire of course there is and there's darkness mm -hmm. like we have to sit in the dark while venus is in the underworld there's a period in the cycle which is like not comfortable because it's not meant to be and then there's this beautiful ascension there's this beautiful rising moment because we've been in the dark and it's just glorious there's options mm -hmm. and i think that's what i mean about the full spectrum of, of recognition that we can do, like when it is dark if we have the, we do have systems and structures that can serve us these beautiful cycles versus this kind of nine to five like keep pumping out linear yeah. goal orientated kind of um ethic yeah. that doesn't serve our true nature it doesn't serve our essence as creatrixes Absolutely. and like you say this is this can sound like fairy tale and magic because mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. and it's very it's real both at the like same your time. To create mm -hmm. is very real mm -hmm. too yes both at the same time because mm -hmm. all things are possible absolutely ah oh, it's wonderful to talk oh you said spectrum of 
spectrum of beingness and ocean of beingness. Yeah. We could, I'll make a whole little list of wonderful metaphors we found <laughs> during this time together. And yes, <laughs> cyclical nature and code red is ever valid, right? The more I dive into your work, right. I mean, I've read code red many, many years ago, but I feel like it, that's creating the space. The, the cycle, the menstrual cycle awareness creates a space to then engage with all the other wonderful forces, but it's just necessary. I find for, it's just, right. I don't see how women can <laughs> survive <laughs> without it. Yeah. I know. Well, it's just also and the cyclical nature, whether it's your menstrual cycle, whether it's mm -hmm. the seasons, whether it's the moon, whether it's the planetary cycles, the cosmos, like there are so many mm -hmm. cycles that we can work with and understand ourselves through. And I think that's the, that's the magic and medicine yes. that, that we all need. Lisa, it's been an absolute, what shall I say? Hmm. A <laughs> pleasure which is singing to the depth of my heart and womb and to talk Aww. with you. And I got Thank so you. much from, you use sparks again, other, lots of other little sparks. And I hope that it does the same with my lovely listeners. And yes me too thank you for having me and thanks for letting yeah. me share my heart with your with your wonderful listeners Keep shining your light oh thank you and you and everyone that's listening thank you lisa for being with us and thank you dear listeners for being with us and me too by sharing these conversations with you, I'm leaning into my calling, my own soft rebellion. And it's such a blessing to be creating a platform of resources and inspirations to come home to the creative power of our female body. I would love to hear your takeaways and how this conversation was for you. You can always tag me on social media at Farina Totali or you can write me an email directly, softrebellion at farinatali.com. I'd love to hear from you. Also tell me who, who you would like me to be talking to, what topics you would like to be explored. I really want this to be a conversation. If you know anyone who you think, wow, she might just need Lisa's voice and this conversation, then please forward this episode to them. And if you do enjoy this, pod, this um, podcast and this episode, then please leave a review, give us a follow, press the five star <laughs> button. You can't imagine how much any feedback or literally comment from you helps me to spread the soft rebellion in the world, which is what we are meant to do. <laughs> so thank you. I'll be with you next week. And until then, go and be your unique, weird, wonderful self. Mm -hmm.